This is Randy Thompson. I'm coming to you live with Trudy Adams on Miss Melody, and we're doing our warm-up canter into the canter. Melody is about 14 years old. She's a horse that Trudy has bred. And uh, when I first met Melody, she had gone through some, been at another place type of thing and came back with a lot of serious issues. The canter was one of the hardest things. She's only started cantering with a little bit of connection since, uh, like, January of this year. It's taken us four years, you know, Trudy riding her and working with her to get her to where she's relaxed at the canter because she just bolted and ran around for the first three or two or three years. Good, good. That's it. Take your time. So you'll see the canter is relaxed, not as balanced as it could be, but that's where she is in her training. We finally got her brain relaxed and her thinking relaxed, and now we're working on getting her mentally to stay more balanced. And the way Trudy's doing that is she's suppling her on the outside rein and leg. Supple her a lot more until you feel her lift her shoulders. Yep, slow down the front end. There, praise her. That's all right if she breaks. That's all right if she breaks. Because what was good is she responded by shifting back. And her idea is she's not sure when you're shifting her back if you're asking for a downward transition. And because she, she doesn't really know how to balance yet. So think slower in the front, slower in the front, send her forward. So two steps, you're going to slow down the front end just to get her used to rebalancing. And then you're going to let her lengthen a step or so. Good. Two steps, half haul. Yep, take it. It's all right. There's nothing she can do wrong. That's all right. Yep. So she said that on a smaller circle she falls apart, which most horses at this level of training do. So there's nothing new about what Melody is doing. You may not have seen it before, but in the training process of going from a green horse balance with like a loose rein and just picking up whatever speed she wanted, which could be pretty, pretty fast with Melody in the old days, we're asking her to at least stay slow right now. We'd like her to rebalance more at this time, but it's going to take time because first she had to be mentally ready. You can see she's mentally ready. And now we're training her. It's like a green horse learning how to connect for going into training level. Good. Praise her a lot. Supple her. Suppling. We want her to relax her jaw. And you'll see she broke her gait. It took us two years before we could get her to keep the same canter on the same side because she had so many issues. Again, this is the work that Trudy's doing. You can see the history of everything she's been doing with Melody by going to the playlist area of this channel, Randy Thompson Live, and looking up Trudy and Melody. Good, good, good. That's all right. That was. It's nice because she's staying relaxed and she's trying to figure out what you want to do. So when you're teaching a horse something new that they don't understand, you have to remember it really is an interspecies communication. We're teaching the horse. It's an amazing thing, teaching a horse to get us to stay connected with us and do this stuff. And who knows how they ever figure it out even. But that's what the process is. We're asking for more connection and communication. Yep, keep her hind legs more active as she stays connected. And as she goes into the next level of balance, Melody, where her shoulders will be up and she'll have a rocking horse kind of canter. You can see it's pretty soft now, just not in the balance that we're working towards. Good, good. Like now she'll pick up a canter as you saw from a walk. That only started this last year because before she would run into the canter from the trot. That was all she was mentally able to do. And it was typical of any green horse. So, yes, even at 14, a horse can be green. Good. Take your time. Remember, if you, if you ask for the downward, start a, start a curve. Okay, that's all right. So she'll break a lot at first. We don't care. So at first, with a horse like this that's really complicated and had a lot of issues to work through, they might only be able to do, like, six steps of canter, and then they break. It's nothing that they're doing wrong. It's really hard for a horse to stay connected especially a horse that had the physical and mental issues that Melody did. Well, uh, well, the physical issues we're talking about is we're not sure what happened that she, because she would pace at the canter and the walk. Rem remember when she used to do that, Trudy? So I've got a headset on right now so she can hear me talking. So in the beginning, Melody, her eyes were back, rolled back in her head, her ears were flat. She'd be going around with her mouth open, grinding her teeth, sticking her tongue out. She was pretty frantic. But, you know, the, we filmed the whole process so you can see it. And this shows that 
any, not anybody, but a rider who really wants to take the time and is dedicated to their horse can bring them to a new level because there are a lot of people that wouldn't have even taken the effort with Melody in the place that she was at that time. As I said before, she was a little bit dangerous. Good, good. Soften her jaw. Good, good, because it's hard when you pick up the canter, you feel all of a sudden you'll feel a little bit of bracing. Yeah. And then the hardest thing to do is say, oh my gosh, if it's bracing, it's what? It's hard. It's hard, isn't it? So anytime you feel that your horse is bracing is really when the rider's holding the rein. It could be just a fraction of a second too long. So what, what Trudy's saying is she feels it building up and that leads her to that. So at least you know the pattern. So now when you feel it building up, that's when you need to change whatever you're doing. And making a small circle is not easy. No, because she has to stay connected to do it. You're right, it's not easy. But what it does is it gets her to think more about staying connected with you. And we just keep changing the exercises and finding out what works because she's doing nice canter to parts now. You know, she's stepping up into the canter from a walk. Remember how before we had to, you know, let her do the big trot or whatever into whatever canter she would fall into? Good. That's nice. Take your time. So you notice the canter's nice and relaxed. She's a little on her forehand, but that's where she should be at this level of her training in the canter. Good. Now she's asking for trot by thinking of a circle. That's good. Good. Get her underneath of you with a leg yield feeling. Let her go straight. So as soon as she's under you, you let her go straight again. So the leg yieldy feeling helps the rider feel when the horse is picking up their outside seat bone. Good. Well, that's that's important because you know you're, what you're doing now. She just said that she started in a small circle. At this level, what Trudy's doing is experimenting with. Well, what do I have to do to keep first of all Melody connected under my seat, right, and soft to the rain. So we're playing with different exercises. Sometimes we'll do a leg yieldy feeling. Other times it'll be starting a circle. And uh, again, Trudy's goal is because she can now feel if Melody's under her outside seat bone. And it's just a feeling that a rider has when the horse is on the outside rein and leg. Good. Take your time. Shorten your outside rein until you feel her rock. Yeah. Play with the outside rein so she shifts back a little. You'll feel her behind the saddle more. Good. Praise her a lot. Soften her on the outside rein. Try a couple steps straight in here. It's all right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I know. It doesn't matter. It's just a work in process. And see how relaxed she's staying with it now? So even though she's falling in and out, you'll notice that Melody is staying relaxed with the process. You don't see her... She used to, Remember how she used to whip her tail? She'd stick her tongue out and she would whip her tail so hard that you could hear it. It was like a whip on the other side of the ring. But you'll see now Melody, after this time that Trudy's put into it, she doesn't even, you don't see her flicking her tail. Her tongue is in her mouth. We've got her in a snaffle bit. Good. What a good girl. Take your time. I like how you're taking your time and you, you, now I don't have to tell you when to start a circle because you're really aware of when she disconnects. Good. Take your time. Eyes up. Good. She needs to, you knew that, didn't you? You could feel she's walked off without softening first. So that's all right because that's where she is in her training where you're getting pickier about it. So um, when I say softening and walking off, it's the steps to connection before a horse changes gait, does anything. First, they have to be soft in the jaw. So Trudy's checking that when she picks up the right rein, that Annie, that Melody gives her like a little mini stretch on it, which shows that she's softening to the contact. As a result of the horse softening to both sides of the rein, they release their pole, which releases their neck and back and it creates a rainbow in the horse's neck. That's an easy way to tell if your horse is, if they're going correctly, they'll get a soft rainbow, not a forced head position. And their back is up. So that's, Melody's pretty good about keeping her back up at the walk and trot now. And now we're just at the point where we're teaching her how to stay more up in her back through the canter. And again, this is just the beginning stages with Melody might be the 10th time, you know, in that time, that range that we've actually schooled on it in a lesson. 
and Trudy works on it, uh, you know, off the lesson time, of course. So this is exactly where a horse should be as they're learning how to go from a green horse canter into more of a training horse connection and, and balance training level for dressage. That's it. Right there she's starting to fall apart, so bring her shoulder in until you can see between her ears. That would be the correct bend for the front of the saddle for the riders to feel. And then make sure you can feel her on the outside. It's alright. There's nothing she can do wrong. Good. So try to do the shoulder in positioning in the canter even when you're not on that circle. And so, yeah, he's so true to say, no, yeah, easier said than done. And it is. So all we're doing is there's no, you know, you can't really do a shoulder in at the canter with, where they're crossing their legs. But if they can bring the shoulder over, the rider can bring the horse's shoulder over so they're on the inside hind. It makes it easier to keep a horse more connected when the horse is ready to go there. Because it takes time for a horse to understand what we want. Can't imagine how they can even process all the stuff we do with them. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? Good. Good, nice preparation. She needs to be a little softer in her jaw. Think leg yield into your canter, so she's picking you up from behind. So at first with Melody, we had to ride her. We rode her with the bridle because we couldn't control her and she was a little on the dangerous side. But now she's finally letting Trudy ask her to step up from her leg into the connection of the rein. And it's a miracle with a horse like this. Yes! Do you feel that canter? Look at you've got her in a different balance. Keep her up in her shoulder with your outside rein and leg. Yep, keep her up in her shoulder. Good for you, Trudy. I don't mind that her nose is sticking out a little bit because her shoulder's up there. She's starting to drop. Yeah, so, go oh, good. You can feel her dropping. That's where you need to play more with your outside rein and leg. That was the best balance she's had in the canter. That was really good. Good job. That was very nice. Very nice. Can she have a cookie? She can have a cookie. So tell me what you were feeling right there. Wait until I get up there. Let me grab a cookie. Um, I felt her coming from behind more that time than, you know, falling on her forehand. I guess. That's right. Good girl. Thank you. Thank you. I know she's been working so hard she deserves a cookie. Needed a cookie. She needed a cookie. I needed one so <laughs> Side. So what did you learn about the canter by adding the curves and the leg yield? Because that's yeah, a little different. Help you um, keep them on the outside rein, right. which is what and leg. she and leg, because she wants to fall to the inside. I know that, especially to the left, and it's probably partly me that's created this in both of my horses because I know I had that tendency to let my left shoulder drop. So I'm working harder too to stay up and keep my chest pointed in the direction, look between her ears, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's else. true, it's true. And remember, <laughs> right most yeah. horses do this, so it's a joint thing. It's such a big deal for a horse and rider to connect like that. So most riders are weak, but weaker I do on not, their left. I do not feel her being, um, when she gets quick, it's more not out of like I'm being bad and That's I'm right. running away from you. It's more like I'm losing my balance. That's right. She's lost the frantic because she yeah. used to get frantic and anxious. Remember? Well, she didn't like losing her balance. That's right. You and know? now and she's now like... she just loses her balance and says, well, I guess I have to just break. That's right. You know. That's right. So, that was very nice. Thank you, Trudy. Again, you can watch more of what's been happening with Trudy and uh, Miss Melody by going to the playlist area of this YouTube channel, Randy Thompson Live. You can see their history with the video sessions we've done in the last four years. And remember to subscribe today. Bye.